Welcome to church this morning. It's so good to be here. Welcome as well to you online. Thank you for coming and joining us this morning in worshiping and glorifying our God. Um, if you're still in the foyer, if you want to make your way in and come together um, here in the auditorium, it's good to be here this morning. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do this morning and how he's going to speak to us um, encourage us and how we can be a blessing to each other. I want to as well say that I don't know where you're coming from this week. I don't know what has been happening in your world. I don't know what has been happening in work or in school or, to, or in your family. What I want to encourage us this morning is to really to put those things aside and to look to Him, to glorify Him, to worship Him. It says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humbled hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us look to him and praise him because he's worthy of praise. Kids, if you want to come to the front and take a ribbon and dance, you can do that or something else. Feel free to praise him. Thanks, Vinny. We'll get the adults to stand up. And the kids too. Any of the kids wanting to come down the front? Oh, we've got Benji. Very brave, Benji. Anyone else want to join Benji at the front? Maybe as we start singing, they'll get, oh, here we go. Morning, kids. It's so awesome to see you. All right. All right, Jay, here we go.
sometimes see the strong holes break in the blink of an eye. Death and all our sin nowhere in sight. For the Lord, He is alive. See the lost return from the dead of the night. Every captive free, every chain left behind. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? For the world. And I want to say thank you that we can praise you, that we can lift you high, that we can set our heart and our, our minds this morning on you and glorify you for who you are, that you are the King of Kings. And I want to say thank you that you desire is for people to know you, to know your love, to know that you're the King, that you're the one, the Savior. And I want to pray, Father, that we may, yeah, just really posture ourselves this morning before you acknowledging that you are God and that we're your people. And I pray this in your name. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I was driving home from church, um, taking Elias home from church, and it was really cool because he was very excited. And the thing what he was excited about was that he could memorize a verse. And he was telling me about it. And that was encouraging for me for different reasons. First thing, it's encouraging because I know that my son is in a place where he gets taught scripture. Where he's encouraged to memorize scripture. It's encouraging for me to see that we as a family are in an environment where that is happening. But as well, it is a reminder for me, and it's a challenge for me. Seeing him memorizing that verse pretty quickly was asking or questioning myself, how do I do? And, and now in preparation for the service, I'm reminded of, hey, how good and important it is to actually memorize scripture. Because in the times when we need it, God will bring it up in our heart. He will remind us through his spirit, because he writes his word in our heart. And we so need to treasure his word in our heart. So when we memorize scripture or have a little memory verse for the kids, it's not just for the kids. I think Jake mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. It's for us as a church. So I want to challenge somebody, I don't know, who, who can tell me the memory verse that has been. <laughs> I know that you lies, can. <laughs> Is there anybody else? Who wants to give it a shot? What was our memory verse? Yeah, come on, buddy. <laughs> if the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. John 8, 36. Well done. <laughs> come here, buddy. Can... <laughs> Uh, 
Is there anybody else who wants to give it a shot? That's all right, you choose one. What's your name, buddy? Toby. Hey, Toby. You want to give it a try? Okay. If the sun sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Dawn 836. Well done. Woo! So, come here, Toby. That's so cool. <laughs> Another thing that we really enjoy doing is, um, is celebrating. And I know in families, families celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, or um, other things in different ways. But we want to acknowledge today, is there anybody who had a birthday in the last week or an anniversary or something else to celebrate? Phil. Wow, that is a celebration. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing. Shane and Sean, sorry. Woo, that's so good. Thanks for sharing. Um, Tyler, do you want to come and just go to Phil and to Sean and home? Thank you. Anybody else? Blair. Virgo had his birthday. Is he here? He's, he's upstairs. Shout out to Blair. You can come afterwards and take something out of the treat box. <laughs> That's good. That's so cool. Um, I would like to pray for those things. And then as well, one thing that we want to do as a church, and it's a privilege for us to do, is actually pray for different churches. And this morning we want to pray for St. Luke's Church. Pardon? Okay, that's amazing. Can give praise for that. Um, yeah, we can pray for GBC and we can pray for St. Luke's today, this morning. Um, so let's do that together. Lord, I want to say thank you um, for your goodness in our life. I want to say thank you, Father, for the celebration, for the celebration that um, Phil has shared, Lord. And I want to pray that the baby can arrive well, that the family gets to know each other, and that you just really bless them in their first days um, together. I want to say thank you um, for Sean and Holly for their celebration of their wedding anniversary and for the 30th birthday, Lord. And I want to pray that they get to know your power and your love in their life and that their marriage can go strong, Lord. I want to say thank you. As well for Blair, Lord, I want to pray that you pour out your blessing upon him in this new year of life, Lord, and that he can grow in his relationship with you, Lord. I want to say thank you for GBC and for their 60th uh, wedding anniversary, uh, for their, not wedding anniversary, but they're going because they're your bride, Lord. And I want to say thank you for that. And I want to pray that they can just continue to pour out your and strength into the community, Lord, and can be a light on a hill, Lord. I want to pray that you may sustain them and give wisdom to the leadership. I want to pray as well, Lord, for St. Luke's Church in Taranga this morning. Um, thank you, Lord, that their desire to disciple children, um, intermediate youth, and high school students, Lord. I want to pray that you give them wisdom on how to disciple them and how to lead them and how to teach them your word. I want to pray, Father, that you give understanding and insight for the leadership um, and faith and discernment and wisdom and how to lead the church in a post um, COVID time, Lord. You see the struggles they're facing, the decisions that are coming up, and I want to pray for your presence upon them. I want to pray that you may shepherd them and lead them and guide them, Lord. I want to pray that you may be honored through all what they do, Father. I want to pray that you may be honored through the actions as a church. And I want to pray as well that people who are calling St. Luke's their home, who are gathering, maybe experience your small voice during the service gathering and as well in the day-to-day -day and the journey that each one of them is on, Lord. I want to pray, Father, for your guidance, Lord, for them as a church. 
I want to say thank you as well, Father, for your provision for them. And I want to say thank you that we can see that we're part of a wider body. And I want to say thank you as well, Lord, for life zone. I want to say thank you, Father, that you have placed us as a family together and for your provision for us as a church. And I want to pray this morning for Sue Walker, who came home from the hospital. I want to pray that you continue to heal her, that you put the right people around her to sustain her and help her, Lord, and that you may encourage her, Father. I want to say thank you that you say in Psalm 34 as well that you're close and near to the brokenhearted, Father. I want to say thank you that you see the ones in our community this morning who mourn and who are sad of loss. And I want to pray for Alan and for his family, for your sustaining them, that they can experience your comfort and your grace this morning. I want to pray as well for Dex, Lord, who looks for a house, for a home to stay, that you provide that for him, that he can find a place where he can put his head to sleep, Lord. In all of this, I want to glorify you, that you're the Lord who holds all things in his hand, and that you are our God. Thank you that you're with us and for us. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple, not a couple actually, <laughs> one part, like one part of us as a church is that we want to give people the opportunity to do an internship, to take a, take a year, do some study, and actually intern a lifestyle and serve within this church. I have done my internship about four years ago, and I'm really thankful that I did it. I'm thankful for the opportunities that I was given to serve within LifeZone to experience community, get to know people, and really as well spend time in studying God's word and putting things into practice. And I have to say it was a huge impact for my life and my family to get involved and get here, found feet and grow root in life zone. So I don't know where you're at in your journey. If you're just new to church or if you have been here for a long time, I don't know if you just finished school or if you're already fine to your work time, but I want to ask you or encourage you or challenge you to think about that this could be something for you. So we're going to have a little, uh, we have a little video prepared and we just, we'll watch that. <laughs> Hey, I am Carissa and I get the honor and privilege of youth pastoring here in Lifeson. I'm so, so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Um, and, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but in 2020, I interned here with Pathways Bible College. So what led me to do this, this crazy journey of Pathways and Life Zone, was really, I kind of fell in love with Life Zone, the church, um, back in 2019 when I was on Headspace, the Christian Get Through program. Um, and that was so cool. And yeah, I just loved Life Zone. I could think of no place better than that I wanted to be than in the house of the Lord, serving there. Um, and then I heard it included pathways and I was like, alrighty, we'll send it. So in 2020, I interned with youth, um, which was so much fun. And practically it looks like helping organize and run a Friday night high life. And, you know, just really developing my leadership skills, my public speaking skills, um, man, so much was developed in that time. So study-wise is 16 hours of study, which included reading and writing assignments, um, well, writing for assignments and everything. So yeah, it was, it was a lot and it was good and it was super growing. And I learned so much throughout that time that like I'm using right now today um, in the life that God has given me. Also, block courses were super fun. They were so, um, man, they're so impactful, so informative, um, and so like community focused as well. Like you got so much community from those block courses of like other students from around the country gathering together in one place, all learning um, from these amazing teachers about the Bible and the and and God and so much. And it was just so much good stuff. Highlight of the year of 2020 was seeing man like how God moved in the lives of the youth and of the youth leaders like just being so involved in that um, community is just insane like to see 
God moves so powerfully um, in, in the lives of the, of the youth of this church here. And yeah, it was so exciting for my faith, for everyone else's, is 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 just is so exciting. One thing that God did in and through me, like during the year was, man, He really grew my faith. Like my faith was so um, matured through the year, I suppose you could say. And in that, He was also able to use my faith and, and use, like, use me to encourage other people's faith. And it was so, man, it was so energizing for my, for my walk with God. Man, it's, it's, been, it's been God developing those, those skills in me way back, I don't know, it was only two years ago, way back in 2020. Um, that, man, I'm using today, right now, in the role that He, and the place that He has placed me in, like interpreting the Bible and public speaking and the leadership development that I was, I was, I was getting all in that time and so much more. He's, he's, he's using all those skills that I was learning back then and, and yeah, today He's using it. So it's super exciting. For me, internship, it's led to it's led to a deeper passion to see youth lives transformed by God. Like that's what I want to see. Um, and that in turn has led me to where I am right now, which is the blessing and honor it is to be a youth worker and a youth pastor here in Lifesum. Man, what would I say to someone who's considering doing an internship? You're, you're considering giving up a, a, a year of your life to to study the Word of God, to, to grow deeper with God, to, um, man, to serve in His house. I don't see how God wouldn't bless that and honor you for doing that. There's so many ministries that you could potentially intern at, and that's, well, like, obviously, youth's pretty cool. Um, but there's also, there's also kids' life, there's also media, there's, um, there's community, there's events, there's, there's so much. We have so much on offer for you. If you want to talk to anyone about that, talk to me, talk to Steve, talk, talk to Colleen, talk to anyone that's on staff here. Email, um, email, email office at lifesome.church. <laughs>
and we want to share a meal together with our Saviour and our Lord. It's an act of worship. So we ask you to stand with us as we worship in song. Um, And at any point, um, please feel free to come and share in that communion and, and as we worship together.
Tasted 
Father, thank you for your presence here. Thank you for the assurance that you meet us exactly where we're at. Thank you that you are not distant and disinterested, but you are up close and personal. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your compassion. There is none like you. We stand in awe of you. We're humbled by your majesty that we would be able to call you Savior, Lord, and friend. We love and adore you. We ask, Lord, that you would achieve your purposes for this gathering, that you would draw near to us as we draw near to you, as we look into your word. Would you give us ears to hear? Keep our hearts tender, Lord, receptive to the things that you want us to to know, the areas in our lives that need to be transformed by your grace and by your power. You're so good. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please grab a seat. Thanks, team. Oh, thank you, Vinny. I know um, Rebecca, Bex has said it and Vinny has said it, but it is so good to be here, right? I reckon it's good. Always good to be in the house. Always good to encounter the uh, presence of God with other believers. Um, is Sue here? Have we got Sue? Has Sue managed to be here? No go, not today. Sue came out of hospital on Friday, I think it was, and um, I know she was, she's been watching online in hospital, which is so cool. Isn't that awesome to be able to um, lie in bed and kind of be in a cast or plaster or whatever it is called and still be able to watch and connect with us? So I, I take it that you're doing that right now, Sue, and glad that you're out of hospital. One thing that has happened while Sue has had almost three months in hospital is her garden has continued to grow. The garden and the lawns, I believe, is kind of like the land of the Triffids. And um, I would love it if we could get half a dozen or a dozen plus people to go around there and just deal to it and get it all sorted and and tidy and respectable and easy for people to mow and and sort out. So if you would like to be a part of that, if uh, I know there's, I've already got two or three names that go, yeah, we'll go around and do that. But if you would like to be a part of it, if you could come and help tame the forest and get it manageable, then um, see me, see uh, Nathan Laurie or Vinny or anyone that was up here and we'll be able to point you in the right direction and organise a time and a place. Wouldn't wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be awesome? (laughs) I reckon. It's awesome that um, Sue is healed and God's grinding her uh, healing into her body and she's kind of getting more mobile and able to come out of hospital, but I just think it'd be really neat if we could bless her in that way. Hey, we are here today, praise the Lord, and it kind of feels like finally we are starting this series on the Holy Spirit. I talked a little bit last week how it's kind of been delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. I don't want us to think about this as, oh, we've wrapped up all of that other thing, resolving conflict and restoring relationships and the call to community, we've completed that, we're done, and now we're on to the next thing. Let's not think about it that way. But let's think, and I think that, that God will continue to do this, but it's, think of it as building. We're just continuing to build on what it is that God has for us as his church. We're not kind of like tick, done, and then, all next thing. But hold on, I haven't actually already finished with that thing. We're just building and growing and going from strength to strength. When it comes to the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, without a doubt, Holy Spirit is the most mysterious of the three. Yet I suspect he's the one we know the least about. There's no better place in the Bible to learn about the Holy Spirit than John chapters 14 through to 17. This is Jesus. It's not the only place that talks about the Holy Spirit exclusively, but that is a really good few chapters because this is Jesus' upper room discourse which takes place the night before he is going to die. When you know you're speaking to people you love, 
and you'll never speak to them again, how many know that you don't talk about the weather? You don't go, oh, boys, we've had a lot of rain lately, haven't we? We have had a lot of rain, eh? Anyone over it? But when it's your last night with those that you love, and you know you're not going to talk to them again, you talk about things that are crucial to you and things that are crucial to them. And so for me, it's intriguing that some of Jesus' last words to the disciples are filled with teaching about the Holy Spirit. To me, that just shows how important this is. And so let's look more closely at Jesus' teaching under three headings, who the Spirit is, what the Spirit does, and how we receive what the Spirit gives. And so we're going to read John chapter 14, verses 15 to 26. And I really encourage you, if you have got the Word of God in electronic form or in good paper form, I see some in paper form. If you've got that, it pay, it will help you to get into John 14 and just kind of stay there because I'm going to read these verses and then I'm going to reference them a whole lot and they won't necessarily be on the screen. I don't even find these verses easy to read. Is that just a... So I'm going to go slow. And Father, I pray that you would help me now. That you would help me to um, honour you. That you would help me to communicate your word in a, in a way that is accurate, in a way that is glorifying to you, in a way that would strengthen the church. And I pray that you would give me ears to hear and that you would give all of us in this room, online, ears to hear what it is that you have to say. Help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 16 says, If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Woohoo! He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I was raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. How are we doing? Are we all right? We're, we're tracking? We're following? Good. That's good. Obey, um, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and re reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Whew. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. Tricky passage, right? Not even, for me, it... I struggled to even flow in that. But what we're going to do from now all the way until I think it's December 4th of the next 10 weeks is that we are looking at what the Bible teaches about the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. 
And my impression is that there is an awful lot of churches in Aotearoa and throughout the world that talk about nothing, teach nothing but about spiritual experiences, spiritual experience. And then on the flip side, the other side, there is an awful lot of churches that really stay away from the subject of Holy Spirit and spiritual experiences. And they talk about what is right and what should and shouldn't be done. And there's this imbalance. And I think that the remedy for that imbalance is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And what we will see there, because as we go deeper into our understanding and and getting to know the Holy Spirit, we will discover that spirit and truth go together. What is it that goes together? Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth go together. And that is what we're going to be doing over the next, I think, 10 weeks up to December before. And so this is an introduction and it's a great Bible passage for us to do a massive big overview. It's like an aerial view and it's really broad, but it will get us going. It'll serve as a platform to go into the coming weeks. First, who is he? Who is the Holy Spirit? And I've already given you a major clue, a, a, a heads up by the choice of my pronoun. The Holy Spirit is the personal divine resident of the Christian heart. The Holy Spirit is the personal divine resident of the Christian's heart. Holy Spirit is living inside of you. Anyone? (laughs) It's incredible. The Holy Spirit is the personal divine resident of the Christian's heart. First of all, personal. Have you noticed that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit not as an it? Sometimes we do that. I hear around the place, it. Jesus doesn't refer to Holy Spirit as an it. And he doesn't refer to Holy Spirit as an energy or a force, but as he. Jesus refers to Holy Spirit as he. He is an advocate. Ephesians 4.30 says the Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. Hebrews 10.29 says that the Holy Spirit can be insulted, disdained. Romans 15 says the Holy Spirit loves And so the Holy Spirit loves, the Holy Spirit can be grieved, and the Holy Spirit can be outraged or or, or disdained. An impersonal force cannot feel those feelings. That's a person. And so the Holy Spirit is a person, but he is not only a person, he is God. He's God. More than an impersonal force More than a it, he is a person, he is God. And you see, for example, right there where we read, it it says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another. And we'll get to that word advocate in in a minute, but he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Jesus is saying, I'm an advocate And he's another advocate. Now there's two Greek words to talk about that or describe that word, another. And one of them means that there is, um, that there's, uh, hetero is the word which means actually opposed or different than the one that previously was or is. And then the next word that is used here is, the word allos, and that means it is just like the other one. Now you have to realize that he has given us another just like he is. So the Holy Spirit is God, not a it, not an impersonal force or power. He's God. 
And you've got to realize what Jesus is saying here because Jesus made some enormous claims about himself. I think it's in John chapter 8 where you see Jesus say, before Abraham was, I am. And so Jesus takes the divine name that God gave to Moses in the burning bush and Jesus says, it's me before Abraham, I am. Jesus claims to forgive all sins. He claims to forgive all sins. And that means that when he says, I can forgive all sins, that means that sins are against him, against Jesus Christ. Because you can only forgive sins that are against you. And Jesus says that he's going to judge the world. So Jesus is constantly saying, I am equal to God. I'm equal to God. And I'm sending you someone who is just like me. So the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit is God. And what we're right into now, and we don't want to spend much time here, but what we're right into now could be what's called the dizzying doctrine of the Trinity. <laughs> oh man. And this series is about the Holy Spirit. And so we're not going to park here for a whole lot of time, but in verse 2 of this chapter, John 14, we didn't read, but in verse 2, Jesus says, I'm here, but I'm going away. I'm with you now, I'm here, but I am going to go away. And then he says, when we drop down into the verses that we read, that, but the Holy Spirit is coming. The Holy Spirit is coming. And in verse 21 and and through to 23, we read things like, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. And then drop down again, we will come and make our home with each of them. And so stay with me here for a, a bit, all right? The dizzying doctrine of the Trinity. Just hang in there for a minute. And so he is saying, I'm going away. The Holy Spirit is coming and therefore I am coming. Jesus is not saying, oh, I'm not really going away. I'm coming to you in the form of the Holy Spirit. Nor, on the other hand, is he saying, oh, I'm going away, and therefore I'm not coming. He's coming. Pretty simple, right? (laughs) It's definitely confusing. But Jesus is saying there is not three gods. He's saying there are not three gods. They are two, one to be three. And on the other hand, it's not one person in three forms. There he has his father hat on. There he has his son hat on. See what I did there, son hat? There he has his father hat on, there he has his son hat on, there he has his Holy Spirit hat on. It's not that. It's not three gods. There are two, one for that, but it is not one God in three forms. There are two, three for that. It's one God in three persons. One God in in three persons. I encourage you to study this. I encourage you to lean into this. It'll be a thing for you through your Christian life if you cannot grasp this, if you, if you struggle to hold this in your hand. Here's why I want us to see, me to see, you to see, and why it's so important. The Holy Spirit is not in an impersonal force. He's not an impersonal force. The Holy Spirit is a divine person in the middle of your life. Church, I'm just going, wow. The Holy Spirit is a divine person in the middle of your life. Why does that matter? It matters because the Bible talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit. And later on, we're going to have a whole message, a whole sermon on what it means to be filled in the Holy Spirit. Lord willing, that's happening in a few weeks. But being filled with the Holy Spirit is to experience incredible joy and experience incredible power. 
I want to experience incredible joy and I want to experience incredible power. I want you to experience incredible joy and incredible power and I believe that God wants all of his children to experience that. He wants us to experience it. So how, you get, how do you get filled with the Spirit? If you're filled with the Spirit and you think of the Spirit as an impersonal force, you are going to be seeking that in a different way than if you understand being filled with the Spirit is to be filled with a person. And if you tried to get filled with an impersonal force, you're going to do that in a really mechanical way. You're going to do it in a mechanical way. It's like these things that you would do almost by rote in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And for example, Eastern thought conceived God the divine as an impersonal force. And its approach is meditation. But the meditation and the Eastern thought of the divine force is always to empty your mind of words, to empty your mind of thought, to empty your mind of rational thought and words so that they can connect with the divine force and yet whenever you get into the Bible and you see the word meditation the word meditation will come up in the Bible when you see that Christian meditation biblical meditation is not emptying the mind of rational thought but it is filling the mind with the word of God it's filling the mind to meditate on the word of God not empty it not empty of rational thought, and, but to take the word of God and to have it so in your mind that you meditate on that. It is a completely different approach. And if you think of the Holy Spirit as an it, you are going to be trying to fill yourself with the Holy Spirit in a mechanical approach. And I hear a lot of Christian teaching on being filled with the Spirit that kind of sees the Spirit as some sort of electrical charge some kind of vibe or amperage, a zap. And therefore, the way that you get filled with the Spirit is by pushing certain buttons or turning certain keys. And if you pray in a certain way, and if you do certain things, and you refrain from certain things, and you repent from certain things, if you push all of the buttons, at the right buttons at the right time, then whoosh, and you'll be filled. It comes, and you'll be filled with the Spirit. But no, 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 no. If the Spirit is a person, then to be filled with the Spirit is like being filled with a person. How does that work? How does it work to be filled with a person? Hasn't happened for a couple of years because our borders have been closed, but when our family would host um, pastors, friends, people that we respect and, and love and look up to, we kind of do this thing and it just happens naturally in our home. I'll work really hard around the yard. I'll make sure that the, all the edges are done and the lawns are mowed and all the flaxes are, you know, all that stuff. I'll just work hard to make the yard look really good and then we do some spring cleaning in the house and we put everything in its place and probably have a few trips to the tip and we just clean up and we prepare for our friends who we love and respect and know and esteem to come. We kind of prepare the whole environment. And then when they arrive, this really weird thing happens. We get along abnormally well. It's not a sham, but does, does anyone kind of know what, how that can work sometimes? It, it, it's not that we're being false, but the little things that might rub us or irritate us with the, the siblings or the, the, the kids and all that kind of stuff, we, it's just kind of like harmony. We're all like chill and we're good. And people come in and it changes. Everything has changed. The, the outside has changed. The inside has changed. The behavior has changed. The relationships have changed. Everything's different. It's not just my family, please, someone tell me. Yeah, okay, couple, yeah, that's good. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is living in your life. The Holy Spirit, God, is living in your life. He's living in your life. And to be filled with the Spirit, you are in awe 
that God divine is living in your life. And when you have that understanding and that acute consciousness that God is living in you, the glorious person of the Holy Spirit is living in you, the person is there and that person should change the way that you live. Change the way that you live. It would bring integrity to your life. It would bring integrity to my life. And there is all kinds of stuff that I'm doing and that you're probably doing. And if we just stop for a moment and thought the divine visitor is not a visitor, is resident in our life, it will affect how we live. To be filled with the Spirit is very different than to be filled with a force. So number one, the Holy Spirit is the personal divine resident of the Christian's heart. He is alive in you. He lives in you. Which leads us to the second point. What does the Holy Spirit do? Well, there's two words here and they tell us what he does and they're great. Verse 17 tells us he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. He is the spirit of truth and he is an advocate. He's the spirit of truth. What, is, what does that mean? What does it mean to be the spirit of truth? On one level, we know that the Holy Spirit essentially authored the Bible. The Holy Spirit literally is the author of the Bible. Have you thought about that recently? As an example would be 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 to 21, and they read like this. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the... What were they moved by? The Holy Spirit, and they spoke from God. And then there's John 6:63 6, and it says the spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing and the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. In other words, the words of Jesus that you see in the Bible were produced by the Spirit. And if you embrace them, if you receive them, if you understand them, they will lead you to eternal life. The Holy Spirit at one level is the author of the Scripture. In fact, this goes back to the idea of what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit is a person as opposed to a force... You see, if you go to Ephesians 5.18, this famous passage, Paul says, where he Paul says, be filled with the Spirit, and then he makes a list of the Spirit-filled traits. A life that is filled with the Spirit, he gives the traits in Ephesians 5.18. And again, we're not going to camp there because we're doing a whole message on being filled with the Spirit. But if you go to another one of his letters in Colossians, Paul writes often, well, he's writing to churches and he's, he's often wanting to convey or to communicate the same truth. He wanted to the basic truth across. But in Colossians chapter one, it says this, let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Which is the same as saying, be filled, be filled with the word of God. Be filled with the word of God. Be filled with the word of God. And then there's a list of a word-filled life. The traits, the characteristic of a word-filled life. And they're the same as what Paul shares in Ephesians 5.18. Do you know what that means? See, to be filled with a person is to be dominated by a person, is to hang off that person's every word. It means to be dominated by and saturated by the scripture. 
to let it dwell in you richly so that the same, it, it, it's not the same thing as knowing information. It is to take it in and to make it a part of yourself. To take God's word in and to make it a part of yourself. Vinny just challenged us around memorizing the word of God. But it's taking it in and making it a part of yourself. It means to be dominated and saturated by scripture. You know, you can look at glasses. You can look at those glasses, but that is not why I spent so much money on those glasses. I didn't go to the optician and spend hundreds, anyone relate? (laughs) Hundreds on these. I did not go to the optician and do that to sit back and say, hey, Carleen, babe, come and look at these awesome glasses. I didn't do that. I paid hundreds. I went to the optician multiple times so that I put them on and look at everything else through them. And the scripture, it's one thing to look at the scripture and say, I'm going to learn the facts. And it's another thing to say, I'm going to let it dwell in me richly. I'm going to let it dwell in me richly. It's another thing to say, I'm going to be saturated by it. It's another thing to say that I'm going to take it, I'm, I'm so going to take it in that I'm going to look at everything else through the lens of Scripture. Therefore, to be filled with the Word and filled with the Spirit is the same thing because He is the Spirit of truth. In fact, he goes on beyond that through, we, though we referred to it here, look, look at verse 21 in, in John 14. Those who accept my commandments, that's the word, and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Now that's interesting, what does it mean? Here are some people who obviously believe in Jesus and they obviously are obeying Jesus. He's sharing with the disciples and and Jesus and they're reading the word of God and, and Jesus says, I will come and reveal myself to them in the passage on the Holy Spirit. I will come and reveal myself to them. What does that mean? Do you know who he is? Of course they know who he is. They They know who he is. That is the Holy Spirit taking the words and making them life, taking the words and making them power. It goes beyond information. It goes beyond knowledge. It's dwelling on it, meditating on it, letting it here. In Ephesians 3 verses 16 and 19, and I love these verses. They're probably some of my favorite. They're really important to me. But he says here, Paul again, I pray He's praying for his friends. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. You see, he's talking to Christians and he says, by the power of the Spirit, I'm praying that through the power of the Spirit that, they, that Christ may dwell in their hearts. Christ is already dwelling in their hearts or they wouldn't be Christians. And then he says, I'm praying by the power of the Spirit that you may grasp, that you may have the power to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of Christ is. What's he talking about? Let me give you an example. If you have been at Lifestone Church for any length of time, you have probably heard me quote certainly the first part of Hebrews 4.12. And Hebrews 4.12, the beginning of it says that the word of God is alive and powerful. 
And then sometimes I will carry on and speak to you about how I was reading a Bible passage that I've probably read dozens, if not a hundred plus times. I may have even memorized it. I may have even taught it. I may have prayed through it. I may have read it out loud. I may have listened to it. I may have I've been in that passage numerous times. And yet all of a sudden the words leap out to me and they hit me between the eyes like a four by two. Anyone kind of go, oh yeah, I've heard you say that in the last few years, Steve. I can hear myself saying that. That is different than information. It's like I have transitioned or God has transitioned it from information to revelation. I know it's revelation. Please don't. Let's not. But it's suddenly become a real and live and powerful for me at that particular time. And I've wanted to dwell on it. I wanted to park on it. I've been captured by the wonder and beauty and majesty and splendor of Jesus Christ and how he has revealed truth to me through the pages of his word. That's what he's talking about. It's the difference. I'm in awe of God through it being alive and speaking to me. See, it's one thing to read the scripture. It's another thing to have the Holy Spirit come and reveal Jesus Christ to you in it. It's one thing to know Christ dwells in your heart. It's another thing to sense it, to experience it. It's one thing to know in your head that sugar is sweet, but it is another thing to taste it and have your whole body electrified by it. Anyone had an oversized energy drink when they shouldn't have? You can know it, but then you experience it. It's one thing to know in your head, and it's another thing to sense it and experience it. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's the author not only of objective truth, but of subjective truth. He makes it come alive in your life. He makes it live. He makes it vivid and powerful. He makes it life-changing. And that's the first thing that the Holy Spirit does. And so church, I want to encourage us to be men and women of the word of God. Maybe we've got to dust it off. Maybe we have not been in this word of God, in the word of God. But I want us to love the word of God do you know what? I, in the last few months, I've had a friend, a couple of friends, who have actually chased me. I didn't think that it was possible, saying this out loud sounds strange, but I didn't think that it was possible for me to have more of the Word of God in my life than what I already have. For years and years and years, I've been a self-feeder. I've been like, if I've got 20 minutes to drive from my home to this building, I'll listen to the word of God. I'll listen to a message. I listen to Christian music because it's psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. It's bringing truth into my mind. I didn't think that I could actually get any more in. But I tell you, there's been two people in my life for the last few months who, are, who have lifted the word of God in my life, have challenged me around the word, of my, the word of God. I told you a few weeks ago that one of them says to me, don't just send me the version whole text, but send me the reference because I want to open the word of God and I want to turn the pages and I want to read it for myself. I want to read the verses before it that you sent me and I want to read the verses after it that you sent me. And so will we be people of, that are filled with the word of God and then will be people that are characterized by spirit-filled life. And so let's read it, let's study it, let's pray through it, let's share it, let's speak it out loud, let's sing it. Maybe you've got to change something in your life. Maybe something's got to go to create margin to get more word of God in your life. Getting rid of social media for me was the best thing. It helped I, can, I was getting to the stage where I'd be scrolling, not through that. I'd be scrolling through a device and say, oh, I'm just going to check one post. And 30 minutes later, I'm on to post 300 and whatever. 
I sound like I'm bagging. Maybe unsubscribe from Netflix. Maybe instead of watching junk, watch a message. Share a message. Man, I watched this message the other day. This is what's happening in me at the moment. I watched this message the other day. I'm like, when am I going to watch that? I've rigged up a little stepladder next to the spa pool. And I can open the iPad in the spa pool. <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Man, what a rich pastor. Got a spa pool. A pastor who finished pastoring rang me one day and said, do you want my spa pool? The house is sold. You've got eight hours to come and get it. Praise the Lord for Kelly Carson. We jumped in the car and went over and put it on the trailer and brought it back. Oh, it's such a blessing. Anyone want a spa? You can come and have a spa at our place. You're, you're welcome. It's God's spa. It's not mine. But you know, I, I don't know what you've got to do. That's working for me. But what works for you? What works for you to take this in? And have it dwell in your heart. Have it affect every part of your life that you would be filled and characterized by a spirit-filled life. The team's going to come up and we're going to worship through music and, and song just for one more song. But I don't know what your response is. Holy Spirit will bring you the appropriate response for you. Maybe you've got to repent of your thinking. You know what? My, my thinking is, I just want to get zapped by the Holy Spirit. I want to do all those things and get environmentally right. Maybe, maybe your thinking is, I've been calling Holy Spirit it for too long. Maybe it's that thought, that knowledge, that the divine person, God, Holy Spirit, lives in you. I just kind of thought of some verses that I memorized a while ago, Ephesians 1, I think it's about verse 19, and it says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. The same power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor, at, at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. And it goes on to say, I haven't obviously done this enough lately, but it goes on to say, He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and made Him head over all things for the church, for the benefit of the church. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Father, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you that you live in us. Thank you that you don't abandon us as orphans. But we have your power. We have your comforter. Thank you for your word. I pray that you'll help us to reprioritize the order of our life to meet men and women who are submitted to you, who are saturated with your scripture, with your word, the Bible, and that the fruit of the Spirit would be obvious in our lives, that there would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control. And I pray that as people look on and they observe our lives, that they would observe you and that they would come to know your love and your salvation. And they in turn would live lives that are surrendered to you. And through it all, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to you goes all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing again about the, um, the Trinity, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And feel free um, 
want, stay seated if you want to, stand if you want. However you want to respond in this moment to God, whatever the Spirit is doing in your heart, then you respond.
Um, we're coming into a time now we're going, when we are going to commission um, Vinny as an elder. So if you are able to take a seat, that would be really appreciated. Um, just invite Vinny and the elders up to the front as we do this. I want you to know the, um, just the process. And, and Sarah, come on, Sarah, you can come on up as well with, with Vinny. I want you to know the, a little bit of the process, how we uh, go a, about getting to this point where we're affirming and laying on of hands of Vinny to uh, his eldership and elders. First of all, that what has to happen is that the elders need to be unanimous on who it is that we are going to approach. And so until there's unanimity with the elders, we are not going to go and approach someone to be an elder. That's the first thing. So we would pray, we would recognize that we need to add to the team, build, to the, build the team, and we would agree on a name and then we would go and approach that person and we would sit with them, we would invite them to pray and uh, ask questions backwards and forwards as to whether they feel called of God to step into the role, the office of elder. While that happens, we would then put in e-news the name and we would invite feedback on that person in relation to character, the guidelines that are laid out in Timothy and in Titus. And sometimes, quite often, mostly people feed back. And that has been served really, really well for us in the last kind of uh, 14 plus years that Kelly and I have been here. There's been um, feedback where we haven't been able to see what it is that somebody else sees and knows. And so it's been a great platform for discipleship, for growth, to have the congregation affirm what the elders believe. Then when that happens, and if the person says, yes, I feel called by God to um, stand in the office of elder, they would begin to meet with the elders. And the phrase that we use at that time would be called for a season of consideration. And so there's obviously character, but there's things like chemistry and capacity and competency and some of those other things that we might be open to while they're sitting with us, the person may end up going, you know what, this is not right. This is not sitting right with me. Or in turn, the elders might end up in a place where it's like, hey, this is not sitting right with us. And it's not awkward. It's, it's, not, it's a conversation and it's a growth opportunity. And so Vinny has been through, Vinny and Sarah, I say that, how many people know that um, always the spouse is significantly affected when you are an elder? It is... Yeah, when Vinny comes out to meetings or when he has other elder responsibilities, Sarah's probably the one at home keeping the family together. Would that be, am I right to say that? <laughs> so there's, it's always a, a family deal is, is what it is. And so we're at the point now where we've been through this with Vinny and it seems right to us in the Holy Spirit is what we would be saying, that we would lay hands on Vinny that we would affirm the call that God has on his life to step into the role of elder. We were saying yes and amen. And so we're aligning ourselves with what it is that God has revealed. And so before we pray, we're gonna ask Vinny to share what Vinny wants to share. Uh, thanks, Dave. And I wanna, I don't know why, but sorry. It is a privilege for me to be up here and to be prayed for and commissioned as an elder. And I'm thankful for this. Um, when Sarah and I came back from Germany around almost a year ago now, we were thinking about how we can serve within church. And if I would like to do some more training, maybe as a pastor, and to become a pastor, or if there may be other ways that we could serve, that I could serve within church, that God calls us to. How we can use our giftings to be obedient to Him, to glorify Him. And while we were talking about these things, we talked about eldership, and that this could be a place for us, maybe one day, to serve within church, but we kind of left it in God's hands and God's timing. 
and we didn't know that it would happen sooner rather than later. And we actually got asked pretty quick when we came back to consider, when we were setting back into things to consider, and it's pretty amazing. And as I said, a real privilege. And fast forward, we're here. And I want to say thank you for that. And when I was thinking about yesterday, what I would like to share, and a verse came to my mind, the verse out of Matthew 20, 28, where it says, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. And I hope, I really hope and want to, I want to serve God and you through eldership well. And I hope that I can be obedient to God and that He's glorified through my actions and decisions. That I'm guided and directed by His Spirit, the Spirit of truth, how we're here today. And I hope that I can be a support to anyone within this family, this church family. That I can be an encouragement, a help, and a brother and come alongside. And I'm thankful for your trust I'm thankful for your trust and for this opportunity to serve you in this role. And I'm thankful for the people I can serve alongside with and the team I can be a part of because it's a team. And I would like to ask you to pray, please pray that I can be wise, humble, and have a soft heart towards God to serve Him in this role. I'm going to pray. So if you want to stay in church, that'd be great. Are we on? Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your mercy. We just come here today and we pray for Vinny. Thank you so much for this man. Thank you so much for him. And we just um, pray that as Steve talked about, we pray that you fill him with the Holy Spirit. Pray that you, your Spirit will guide him, um, help him down and guide him down the right path he needs to take. Um, thank you for the season that he's on. And I pray, like Benny said, that you help him, uh, help with uh, wisdom and guidance. And uh, I just pray you'll just fill him with your peace as he goes down this track in this next season of life, Father. And pray this in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for um, Vinny and, and Sarah and the children. I pray for them as a family. I want to pray for your um, all-powerful, ever-present, unchanging protection on their lives. I pray that they would stand firm, fully clad in the armor of God that they would recognize the attacks of the enemy and that they would hold the shield of faith, Lord, and extinguish those fiery arrows that, you, that would come their way. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, prompt us to pray for the elders in this church, that you would pray for their uh, protection, but that, you would, that we would also pray, Lord, for just their wisdom and decisions that are made and small decisions and, and large decisions, that we would be... Uh, men and women that would stop and pause long enough to listen to and hear your voice and that we would act, we would have the courage and the faith and the confidence to act in a way that brings glory to you. So would you give them strength? Would you give them comfort? Would their lives be characterized as lives that are filled with the Spirit? Um, yeah, I thank you for Vinny's heart. I thank you for his desire to... Uh, be humble to serve, to know you. And so, Lord, as I, I pray that as he is characterized by a person that draw, draws near to you, that you would draw near to him and that you would use him for your glory. Protect them, prosper your glory through this family, we pray. We love and adore them and we love and adore you. Our, our affection is for the church, to, for people to come to know you, to love you and to serve you and that you'd be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. 
All right, uh, we have gone on a little bit longer than normal, sorry about that, but there is tea and coffee. I'm always, obviously, every time gonna give a big shout out to Radiant Life. Drink coffee, support Radiant Life. Simple as that. Thanks so much. Uh, let's live for Jesus and share his love. Bless your church. Kia ora everyone. Hi. My name's Ezekiel. I'm Lydia. This is Lydia. And we are here today to welcome you into Church News for Lifestone Church. Welcome. Kia ora mate. <laughs> we, we're here to tell you about our working bee. We got going down on the, um, what was the date on that one? The 15th of October. It's the 5th, yeah. Wait, hold on. The 15th of October. Sorry, that was really loud. October. <clears throat> Woo! Yeah. So, uh, in good old tradey fashion, we're gonna have um, a big old sausage sizzle afterwards, and I think that's about um, it's about lunchtime, isn't it? What time was it again? It was guys. What time we started on that day? It's from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We would love to see you there. That was a really impressive catch. I'm just thrilled with myself right now. That's hand-eye coordination. Um, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at Lifezone. We want to spruce up the place, look after it. Everyone, yeah. come down and help in some way, please. That would yeah. be really, really cool. We also have Cat Money starting soon. Cat Money is Christians Against Poverty and it's a course, a free course, that is designed to help you learn how to manage your money and steward your finance as well. It is running in October on the 6th, 13th, 20th and 27th at 10.30 a.m. or 7.30 p.m. You can choose whatever suits you best. Yep. To get in touch with Carleen, you can email her at carleen at lifestone.church or you can catch up with her after the service today. It is the last week to sign up though. It so is the last week be to quick. sign up though. It is very important That's that you really, sign up yeah. um, right now because it's the last week. Yeah. Please do it because it's going to be really, really cool and beneficial for everyone who comes. I'm doing it and some other people are too. LifeZone is having a high tea on the 15th of October at 2pm for all the ladies and the part of the LifeZone community. Come, be a part of it, have some cake, some tea, some coffee, some water. This says water on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not tea. Sorry, no guys. And sorry, no children are allowed because this is a time for the ladies to connect, to have a chat, to meet somebody new and to have a really cool time together in fellowship. I can't wait to see you there. I will not see you there, sorry. Yeah, I wasn't invited. <laughs> Recently, I've been thinking a bit about giving, about what it means to give and how we give and the questions around the topic of giving. Someone shared with me a verse in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 and it says, Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. In this verse, it talks about our heart posture, our heart attitude when we give and that God loves a cheerful giver. In the Amplified Version, I love how it says that God delights in the one whose heart is in their gift. As I've been reflecting on the themes in this verse and the context around it, it sounds pretty straightforward. We should give happily, and because God has put it in our hearts to do so. But sometimes that's easier said than done, right? As we come to the time where we have an opportunity to give to the Lord right now in the context of all being together in church, with the giving stations at the back, Let's take some time and reflect and ask ourselves, what does it actually look like to have our heart and our gift? Is our heart and our gift? Maybe the answer to those questions means we don't give right now. Maybe it means we totally reevaluate how we give. Whatever our answer is, we know that God is the ultimate giver. And when we give what God has put in our hearts, we can't lose. Thank you for watching Church News. Thank you so much. We love you. We think you are awesome and we really value you and um, we think you are an awesome part of the LifeZone community. That's just a more complicated way of saying what I said. Exactly. It sounds cool. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did the lights just turn off? Yeah, the battery was inside. Oh, that's okay. Live for Jesus and cheers love. Amen. Yeah.
Hi, thanks for watching online. It's so good to have you with us. If you need help, specific prayer for anything, feel free to comment in the section below. Otherwise, during the week, give our church office a ring. Or even better, come down and join us. Come down to Seven Oak Lane. We'd love to have you join our service. We want you to know that God knows you. He loves you and he cares for you. So this week, we pray that you might know his love and his resurrection power in a new and wonderful way. Thanks for watching.